and then we'll get to the rest of the stuff. Solving logarithmic equations. We already did some of these, but I want to hit this one in the next example because they're kind of important in making sure we know what we're doing. So if I want to solve 17 minus the natural log of 3 minus x equals 0, what should I do? Okay, move the 17 over, so I'll have negative natural log of 3 minus x equals negative 17. And now what? Yes, it's really important to get the negative out from in front of the natural log. If you don't remove it, it messes your life up. You need just a natural log that's positive in order to change to exponential form. So we'll multiply both sides by negative 1 or divide by negative 1. It gives us natural log of 3 minus x equals positive 17. And now, what do I do? E to the 17th, I change to exponential form. And that's going to be 3 minus x. Am I done? Am I done? No. How do I know when I'm done? When I have the x by itself. So I got to get it by itself, and it needs to be positive when it's by itself. So what do I do now? Can I move the three over? Yeah, I can move over the three. Is that alright with you? What did you want me to move over? Oh no! Don't even bother. It's some huge number. We don't want to deal with. It's a whole lot easier this way. So, yes, I can move the 3 over. How do I move it over? By what? By subtracting, because these two things are added together, really subtracted, but the 3 is positive to move it over. You subtract it, so e to the 17 minus 3 equals negative x. And finally, divide by negative 1. That gives me negative e to the 17 plus 3 equals x. And by the way, it's a whole lot easier to put it in this way in the way it work than it is to put it in by plugging it into your calculator, figuring out all those decimal places. What work won't give you any issues with decimal places this way? You'll have them all there. By the way, this is the exact answer, so the kind of thing we'd be looking for on a test if you needed an exact, where it says you need exact answers. So you get to stop there. Now, one thing you do want to do whenever you have an answer to a logarithmic equation, is take a look at it and see if it's okay to plug it back in here. In other words, when you plug it in here, do you get something that is positive? Because remember, we can only take logarithms of positive numbers. Well, if I take 3 minus negative e to the 17th plus 3, is that going to be a positive thing? Yeah, because it's the 3 in the minus with this plus 3 go together and make 0, and then this is just negative negative e to the 17th, so that's positive. And oh, thank goodness, because you can't take logarithms of negative things. And I can't take logarithms of 0. So that one works. Now, what do I do with this equation? The natural log of x plus 8 plus the natural log of x minus 8 equals 0. How can I solve it? Condense it. I can condense it because once I had a, a single logarithm equals a number, I could change to exponential form. So since this is two logarithms added together, I can condense them into what? The natural log of, I'll multiply these two things together so that will give me x squared plus 8x minus 8x minus 64 equals 0, or simplifies to the natural log of x squared minus 64 equals 0. Now what? Yeah, change to exponential form. So it will be e to the 0 is equal to, yes, that's 1, but the other side for the exponential form is the x squared minus 64, so I have 1 equals x squared minus 64. So i got to keep going, right? Yeah. What do you want me to do? Move the 1 over. Yeah, the 64's 
64 on the other side is easier. So add 64, so I have 65 equals x squared. And then take the square root of both sides. When I do that, I'll have x equals what? Plus or minus the square root of 65. Now let me warn you about something. We are going to check these two answers in the original. In this case, it turns out the one that's negative is not a good one. But that doesn't mean the one that's negative is always going to be a problem. Sometimes it's the positive one that causes the problem, so don't just toss out the negative one because, oh, well, it's negative, I can't have it. What is, so this is some, x equals the square root of 65, and the other one is x equals the negative square root of 65. What is the square root of 65 approximately? I mean, really approximately. Eight, but a little bigger, right? Is that approximate enough for everybody? A little bigger than 8. Okay, when I take something that's a little bigger than 8 and plug it in here, am I going to have something positive? So if I'm taking the square root of 65 plus 8, is that going to be something positive? Yes, that's positive. Okay, what about the square root of 65 or the square root of 65 minus 8? Is this going to be positive? <coughs> Think about it. Something a little bigger than 8 minus 8, so I'm still going to have something a little bigger. So that's positive, that means that one is good. Now what about my negative square root of 65? The negative square root of 65 plus 8. Well, if this was a little bigger than 8, then this is a little on the other side of negative 8 something or other. So negative 8 something or other plus 8 is going to be negative. And actually once I get that I can stop, I can say this is no good. It's not in the domain. <coughs> I don't even have to plug it into the other one. All it takes is for it to be bad in one or the other for us to throw it out. Okay, so I've now done my two pieces. That's what I wanted.